Red Hat. Fedora Linux's corporate overlords have just announced their, their big plans for 2025 for Fedora Linux. And the primary goal is integrating artificial intelligence <laughs> in as many ways as possible into Fedora. Uh, this is from uh, Christian F.K. Schaller, the director of desktop engineering over at Red Hat, meaning he's kind of the, the head honcho that holds the purse strings over all of Fedora Linux. Fedora, for those of you who don't know, it's basically part of of Red Hat. There are people that contribute to Fedora Linux outside of Red Hat, but it's really driven and run internally at Red Hat, which is a subsidiary of IBM. I want to read a little bit from this blog post outlining their, uh, let's see, what was what would they call it? Looking ahead at 2025 and Fedora Workstation. Here we go. The very first section is artificial intelligence. Our one big item on our list for the year is looking at ways Fedora Workstation can make use of artificial intelligence. Thanks to IBM's Granite effort, we now have an AI engine that is available under proper open source licensing terms and which can be extended for many different use cases. Okay, so IBM Granite is IBM who owns Red Hat and owns Fedora. It is their big uh, AI model that they're currently pushing. Uh, you can check it out at ibm.com slash granite. It, every, every big company has their own AI model now because apparently you can't be a company unless you got an AI model. But I, I just want to I just want to point this out in all fairness because if you really dive into IBM's Granite AI, it really is actually open source. <laughs> And now, a lot of you who may have been following various dramatic things happening in the world of open source artificial intelligence, there, is, there have been a lot of gnashing of teeth and infighting about what defines open source artificial intelligence. In fact, the open source initiative came out and created what they called the artificial intelligence, sorry, the open source artificial intelligence definition, which really was not open source at all. In fact, their definition of open source AI means that you can have all of the data <laughs> for the for the for the uh, the AI language model be completely closed source and proprietary and it still count as open source. Uh, clearly oh, the open source initiative is fully bought and paid for by a number of corporate overlords. But IBM here, went a different route and i'm mildly impressed with how they did this i'm just going to read this little snippet from ibm.com in keeping with ibm's strong historical commitment to open source all granite models are released under the permissive apache 2.0 license bucking the recent trend of closed models or open weight models released under idiosyncratic proprietary licensing agreements in Another divergence from industry trends for open models, IBM is providing a detailed disclosure of training data sets and methodologies in the Granite 3.0 technical paper. Um, if you look through it, it's not, they're not giving away everything. <laughs> So if you're hoping for complete and total transparency, I don't know of, of really any AI models that are top to bottom really open. By meaning by that meaning they they provide you with all of the data that they trained on. None of them none of them do that. If you ask them, okay, can I have all of the data you trained on? Oh gee, look at the time, gotta run right. So they, they don't all do that, but at least IBM is doing more than most. So uh, Red Hat's got a point. If you are going to integrate artificial intelligence into a Linux-based operating system, you could do worse than Granite. So uh, okay, all right, I'll, I'll grant him that. Uh, continuing from the uh, the uh, director of desktop uh, announcement here. Also, IBM Granite team has an aggressive plan for releasing updated versions of Granite, incorporating new features of special interest to developers, like making Granite a great engine to power IDEs and similar tools. So code generation, right? 
Uh, we been transform. We been brainstorming various ideas in the team for how we can make use of AI to provide improved or new features to users of GNOME and Fedora Workstation. Basically, they're just, what can we do? Where can we shove AI? Right? They're brainstorming here. They're kind of trying to come up with ideas. They're thinking outside the box. This includes making sure Fedora Workstation users have access to great tools like Ramalama, that we make sure setting up accelerated AI inside Toolbox is simple, that we offer a good code assistant based on Granite, and that we come up with other cool integration points, end quote. So this is, this is a main priority for Red Hat, is making sure that Fedora Linux is all about AI, right? As many cool integration points as they can. And when they use that AI, it's gotta be in-house AI. It's gotta be AI developed by IBM who owns them, right? Uh, they're not going with any other community developed open source AI models. They're going with the IBM model, which it will help to lock people into the IBM ecosystem. You see how this works? Uh, it's not exactly 100% altruistic here, right? Uh, and this is not brand new from, from Red Hat. Red Hat has made a very clear point that the future of Red Hat is all about artificial intelligence, right? They're going to continue developing Linux only in so far as it helps advance the AI agenda. They've been very open about this. That's not me, you know, coming up with some wild conspiracy theory. They were very clear about this. At last year's Red Hat Summit, they had a number of keynotes and I don't want to say six, maybe seven press releases at the event. And Red Hat Summit is traditionally the big yearly event from Red Hat where they announce a new version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, a new big engineering push around Linux, uh, maybe something they're doing with desktop and server Linux, but it's usually very Linux centric historically, not this year or this last year in 2024. It was all about AI. In fact, I think all but one of their press releases, I want to say six out of seven or seven out of eight of the press releases were specifically about artificial intelligence. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find Linux related announcements from Red Hat this year, other than the traditional uh, minor point upgrade to uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which will help embed, uh, help provide the bedrock for future AI advancement, right? Uh, that's how they went. And then uh, this last November, uh, the Red Hat CEO basically came out and said that AI needs to be everywhere and purchased an AI company. Uh, quote, AI needs to be scalable, trainable, and everywhere. That's why I'm especially excited about today's news. Neuromagic is a pioneer in software that accelerates generative AI. With this technology and our shared commitment, Red Hat is building the future of AI with open source innovation, and we're just getting started. Started, right? The future of AI is open source, big red hat logo. And they're really pushing AI, right? Red Hat's pushing AI, IBM's pushing AI. And that means that Fedora is all about AI. It has to be. Fedora really is. Many people like to think of it as a community run Linux distribution, but it's really, really not right. This is the kind of the same sort of situation that exists with SUSE and OpenSUSE. SUSE owns essentially OpenSUSE. In fact, their board of directors is 50% com uh, co corporate employees and the, the director uh, the, uh, the, the, the head honcho, the chairman of the board of OpenSUSE isn't even an elected position. It's someone instilled there by the company, by SUSE. The same sort of situation exists over at Red Hat and Fedora. The, the leadership of the Fedora project, the top dog of the Fedora project is Red Hat employee instilled by Red Hat. It's a Red Hat job, right? The project itself is really a corporate run project with some outside of the company community elements, but most of it is all about internal corporate goals, right? And driving those corporate agendas. And so if Red Hat and IBM are pushing AI, 
that's the way they're going to go. Now, they're not the only one. <laughs> they're not the only company that's going down the AI rabbit hole to an extreme degree. I mean, Microsoft started adding AI functionality into notepad.exe. Friggin' A. Uh, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And really, we're looking at kind of the same thing happening here with, uh, uh, with Fedora. But you'll note, they're not just talking about Fedora, they're talking about GNOME as well. Uh, Red Hat has been traditionally a very big contributor to the GNOME project, the GNOME desktop environment. In fact, Christian Scheller, uh, the director of desktop engineering over at Red Hat is a GNOME contributor, right? And so he's kind of part of that. And so they're really looking at the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, Fedora itself just would be just filled to the brims with artificial intelligence. How that's going to work out, I don't know. Now, there's a lot going on in, in the world of Red Hat, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't remind folks that there's a number of lawsuits underway against Red Hat for racial, religious, and and sexual discrimination uh, against their employees. In fact, there's, there's lawsuits against Red Hat and their parent company, IBM, filed by United States governments, <laughs> like as well as individual past employees. It's kind of a, it's an unknown how that's all going to turn out at this point. Uh, but the lawsuits are rather detailed. Uh, and I, I have a hard time seeing how Red Hat or IBM come out of these unscathed. So there's going to be a lot of turmoil going on at Red Hat right now. It's also worth, worth noting that over the last two to two and a half years, Red Hat has actually let go a number of positions specifically focused on, on the Fedora desktop environment and scaled back their commitment to certain open source projects related to Fedora Linux, including uh, LibreOffice and, and other projects. They've been pulling back on a lot of those things and refocusing everything towards the AI side of things. Again, how that all works out remains to be seen. I would also be remiss if I did not point out that last summer, <laughs> last summer, Red Hat and Fedora held a diversity event and they held a, the Fedora Week of Diversity and uh, and Al, pretty much nobody showed up with over 19,000 employees in Red Hat and heavy, heavy promotion. Uh, they, at the peak, managed to get 44 people uh, in total to show up to this Fedora Week of Diversity because absolutely nobody actually cared. Uh, not within the company, not without outside of the company, and not in the community. No one cared at Fedora or at Red Hat about DEI-related stuff. Yet, yet, the company, the management, the executives continue to push the DEI-related stuff at Red Hat, even though it's getting them sued into oblivion. It's kind of a crazy thing that's happening. So it's it's a lot of wildness happening over in Fedora and Red Hat world. Complete total shifts away from many of the past projects that made desktop Linux great, like LibreOffice, and refocusing all of their efforts, both at, at IBM and the Red Hat corporate level and all the way down at the Fedora Linux level, all the way on artificial intelligence. How will the user base take that? How will the contributors take that? Uh, what will that actually do to their market share and their user base? I, I don't know. And with all the lawsuits happening and the weird culture war stuff clearly raging with inside the company, it remains to be seen how all that's going to shake out, but we'll we'll keep watching it as we go. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers. Uh, go over to lunduke.com and find a way that you want to watch or listen to all the shows. Uh, there's a whole lot of them. Locals, Rumble, X, YouTube, Facebook, Patreon, uh, Substack. There's a podcast RSS feed. You can listen over on iTunes or Fountain or Spotify. I mean, it's all over the friggin' place. You can even download DRM-free MP4s of the files and back them up and convert them and watch them on your Palm Pilot if you want to. Uh, the Lunduke Journal is all over the place. Uh, so go over to lunduke.com. Thank you to everyone who supports the Lunduke Journal. Couldn't do it without you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes, across the inner tubes, I do declare, end broadcast. <laughs>